Hey guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thank you for joining me on another episode. Today is December 28th, 2020, and it is time to give you an update on all the projects I've been working on since we last talked at the end of November. And I thought I would share with you some um, gifts that the kids gave me and plans for the future and things like that. So um, before we get started, I would like to say uh, to give a very warm welcome to all the new subscribers. There have been a lot of you and I really appreciate you joining the community on YouTube and um, I appreciate all the comments and all the likes and the shares. You guys really make my day and keep me motivated to keep creating for myself and for you guys. So if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button and uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. So last month I had picked out the fibers that I was going to spin for a commission job ordered by my daughter's teacher, one of her teachers. And my original plan was to use um, a Tunis roving from a friend's farm, sheep coat farm, and for one of the yarns, and the Gulf Coast uh, wool pool fibers that I had taken to the mill and run through the devedger, so it was all open, it was clean, mostly, um, and I carded it at my friend Dana's house with her really nice brother drum carter, and I brought it home, I made a bunch of roving, I brought it home, and I spun it up and I was not happy. So this is that yarn that I decided not to use. You can see there's a lot of texture, there's a lot of thick and thin. It's bouncy, it's soft, it's amazing, but it is not what I was looking for. So I scrapped that, pulled the roving out that I had made in a different session at the mill, I think I had prepped the fiber a little bit better and I had a really nice roving to work with. So I spun up about six ounces of roving and I made over 500 yards. I'll put a link to the video um, of that project. I dyed it gray and gave it to her at a uh, performance that my daughter was involved in. And I may have shared all of this last month. I don't remember, but if I have, forgive me, bear with me. Anyway, so the second yarn, I actually got permission to play with the fibers. And so I did not use the three ounces of Tunis, which would not have been enough anyway. And instead I took from my deep stash, I took two different fibers. Um, a, some Cormo fleece left over from several different projects and a cross fleece from Hope Springs Farm. It was a hogget fleece and it was Gulf Coast VFL cross, about 50-50, I think. There's a lot of Blue Face Luster in that fleece and it is absolutely divine. So I've been spinning that up and you know, it's taken me a month to get this one yarn done, but that's because right after I started spinning it, I rearranged my house and I took some shelves apart and I pulled my back. And I was sitting in the wrong type of chair. Instead of sitting on the couch, I was sitting in a hard wooden chair, spinning away, and I started having muscle spasms in my lower back. So I had to take a few weeks off, and the teacher, she was really really um, accommodating and patient with me and so I finally sat down this morning and finished the last tiny bit of singles that I had left to spin and then it's ready to ply. This is not going to be dyed but it is so incredibly gorgeous. There's a lot of sheen to it. If I can get some of that to show up. There we go lights reflecting off of it. It's really, really shiny and shimmery. So it may not be as thick as I was wanting, but I know this fiber tends to poof a lot and I'm hoping 
it will poof to the about Aaron weight that she wants. And I'm also hoping there are a full 400 plus yards because I weighed out six ounces, but I'm not sure. And there's always that, did I do it right? Anxiety before it's completely finished. So hopefully I'll get that done today and tomorrow. And then when the kids go back to school, if she doesn't want to make an extra trip out here to pick up her yarn, then my daughter can take it to her when they go back to school, which is really lovely. So I am incredibly happy to be able to get back to spinning. I am spinning on the couch again because that is the most comfortable for my back. I have the special pillow. I think it's called a husband. Um, I don't know. But anyway, I set it on the couch. Um, my legs are much shorter from hip to knee than the couch cushions are. So this shortens the couch and makes me sit more upright, supports my lower back, uh, which is where all the problems are in my back right now. It's really, um, I have really, really tight muscles. Um, my back is doing a whole lot better today than it was two weeks ago when I had to quit spinning. And then the holidays, you know. I still have to be very careful, and I have on the agenda today to go ahead and do some stretches and some very specific therapy-type exercises, and hopefully I can get my back um, doing a little bit better. So, um, as far as the sock spin I've been working on, the emotional sock spin, that has been my sort of uh, therapeutic, calming uh, project. I did get a lot done on it. I spun over half of the first skein. So, you know, I split the braid into two and then each section I divided into four and I'm spinning each bump separately. And then I will do a four ply, traditional four ply, and I will have two separate yarns uh, for matching socks. So I'm actually uh, playing around with uh, distaff spinning, and I'm using just a simple little dowel that I had, stick it in a drawer somewhere. I don't even know why I have all these dowels, but um, at one point I was making drop spindles, and I think this is left over from those days. So anyway, pre-draft the fiber to within an inch of its life and wrap it around the spindle, the spindle, the dowel, and then I can set this on my lap, on the floor, on the couch next to me, or um, that New England flax wheel has a place for a distaff, and I store my orifice hook there, and I just sit this next to it in the hole, and it sits there. So um, I have what's left on here, which is about half of a bump, I think, maybe three quarters of a bump, should be about half. And then I have one more bump to do, and then I'll have all the singles done for the first skein of yarn. And that's really exciting because when I get this skein done, I'm going to take a break from this spin, and I'm going to do something else on that wheel. And I haven't decided which item I'm going to do on that wheel because I have about 20 million ideas. We'll get back to that subject in a bit. Um... So right now I'm just keeping it in a bag. I have the two separate skeins, the fiber for each skein in separate bags so that I will just pull from one bag and then when that's done, I know I've completed all the singles for that one. That's done. And that's all the spinning I have done. So I do have an update on the sweater I was making last time we talked. It's the Compass Sweater by Tin Can Knits. And uh, last time you saw it, it had a ribbing around the neck and it was a whole lot bigger around. Turns out it was two sizes too big. I had to rip the entire thing out. You can see a little bit of footage um, overlaid here. While I'm talking, uh, I had to rip the entire thing out and start over. When I did, I kept to the same alterations I had made to the pattern, mod moderations, and 
I added some more. So I did not do the ribbing at the top of the neck. I cast on the same number of stitches the pattern said to for the two sizes down. And I knit one or two rows and then I started increasing. So I did not um, do the ribbing yet. I will pick up and knit the ribbing around here at the end. And that's because Rachel Smith mentioned doing that in one of her recent episodes in the last couple of months. I don't know which one. But she was making a sweater that she was going to steep. Or maybe it just had a button band picked up and knitted onto it if it was a cardigan knit flat. I don't remember the details. But she said that she was going to save the neck ribbing for last so it didn't create some awkward bulk up at the top where the neck ribbing and the button bands met up. So the neck ribbing is actually going to be knit onto the top of those button bands and I think that's going to be really interesting since I am sticking this. So um, I'm almost done. I have like an inch or two and, and then the ribbing for the bottom. And I have this much yarn left. So if I don't use this up on the body, I will use it up in the sleeves because they're not quite long enough. They have another two inches to go. I can always add the original color, the this pretty stuff, the contrast color into the sleeves if I need more yarn. Um, so if I don't have enough, I will rip this out. This was my color swatch sample. And one of them. And this was the beginning of the skein um, of the ball yarn on the outside. Here it is. And the same colors are on the inside. So if I decide to use this in more of this yarn in this sweater to finish it, I can actually use, I can make it match on the sleeves. So that's good news. Um, from when I ripped out the original color work, I still have a little bit of that yarn left. So I've got this little tiny amount of yarn left. That was in the original color work, but you know, when you go down a size, you have less, you need less yarn, so. And I still have the, the first color, the lightest gray. Oh, it's not in my bag. I am using, my daughter got this bag for Christmas and I stole it. So it's my project bag. So I have leftover from the original yoke. I have this much of the light gray and I still have all of this. So this is going to be the ribbing on the button bands and the neck. Possibly the bottom, but I doubt it. I think I want to do the final ribbing either in this yarn or the dark gray. It doesn't really matter. So I haven't figured that out yet, but I've had the dickens of a time figuring out how to divide my yarn for body and two sleeves. So I knit the sleeves part, part way once, ripped it out, and knit them again. The first time I knit the sleeves, I had two ends of the dark gray and two ends of the medium gray going at the same time as I was knitting from the inside and the outside of the ball. One end for each sleeve, so I was knitting them at the same time. And it was just such a pain to do that. when <laughs> I had to rip it out because uh, I didn't knit the light, the medium gray far enough down the sleeve. Um, so I ripped it out and I re redid that section. Um, I ripped out only to where I had started the fade into the dark gray. So I ripped that much out and then I just kept knitting with the light gray, medium gray, and then added in the fade in a better location and kept knitting until I was six rows past the last sleeve decrease. And 
I need about two inches on each sleeve plus ribbing. So I just broke the yarn off. I did one sleeve at a time when I redid it. And then I went back to the body. I put the last bit of the medium gray after I knit the body all the way through to the end of the skein a medium gray. I ripped back the number of rows I would need to work through the fade and then I worked the fade and this is how much yarn I have left over of the medium gray. That's it. Just a teeny tiny bit. It's like double the width of my shoulders. <laughs> That's all I have left of the medium gray. There is no more of that. Um, so I am I was worried I wouldn't have enough yarn. Turns out I do have enough yarn. So now I'm thinking my other sweater that I asked for y'all's opinion on, I might not need a third color. So anyways, um, I cannot wait to get this done. This is Woolpool Gulf Coast and Gulf Coast Crosses, uh, low quality fleeces that I flicked the locks carded into that, spun and scoured. Some of them I scoured the flicked locks. Some I scoured the bats. And some I scoured the yarn after spinning. So it all turned out okay. And I, I would recommend being consistent through your project. <laughs> but um, yeah. I'm happy. I want to wear it. I think it's going to fit perfectly. Um, so I can't wait to get it done and show it off. Hopefully next time we talk, I will have reveal photos. The final reveal. <laughs> that is all the knitting I have worked on in the past month. Um, I have a lot of plans for future knits. Um, but I haven't started anything else. I haven't worked on anything else. It's been monogamous knitting on this one project for a month. Um, while doing a bunch of other stuff because, you know, I'm spinning and I pulled out my loom again because I, you know, my back was hurting and I was depressed that I couldn't spin and I wanted to spin. It's really, really awful when you're in the mood to do something and you're craving doing it, but your body is in so much pain you can't. So I pulled out my loom. It had a cotton warp on there. I was making orange and yellow washcloths and fighting with the tension on the loom the whole entire time. So I don't know if it's a warping problem or if it's cotton yarn, but I was so sick of messing with it and I wouldn't let myself weave anything else until I finished that because that's kind of how I am. I mean, you don't want to just cut something off your loom when you're in the middle of it. You want to finish. Well, I sacrificed that weaving and decided it was not worth fighting with anymore. And I didn't have, like, I wasn't making this for someone. It, I was just making it for the practice. Um, so I cut it off the loom. And yes, it was difficult, but it was also very freeing. And I feel so much better. So I sat down, I warped up a scarf, and I wove it in about three days while my back is hurting. I have a little TV table that folds up, and it is the exact same width as my loom. So as long as my loom is perfectly lined up on that little table, I can have it sitting in front of me the loom propped on it and on my lap and I don't have to hurt my back in any way. Usually it's my upper back that kills me from weaving because I'm reaching. But with the loom angled on a table that's higher than my lap, but not terribly higher. And then on my lap itself, it's right in front of me. I'm underneath the loom and I don't have to reach very far. So that was eye opening. And I did a lot of weaving while on the heating pad. So, uh, you know, treatment for my back and crafting. So I, I warped up with sock yarn and I wove with sock yarn from my stash. This is commercial sock yarn, not hand spun. My 
tension was not perfect. I seemed to be tighter on the edges and looser in the middle, which is opposite of the cotton. It was really tight in the middle and extremely loose on the edges. Like I had two or three inches of slack in the cotton warp. The two edge threads were ridiculously loose. Um, but on this one, the center of the warp was a little bit loose. The uh, wool yarn is so much more forgiving than uh, cotton. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. And when I washed it, it really, um, it bloomed. And the weave really tightened up. And I'm very, very happy with it. My edges are decent. They're not perfect. They're not perfect at all. But, you know, they're okay. They're way better than they used to be. So when I got this off the loom, and this is double, it wraps around my neck. And if I don't wrap it all the way around, it hangs down where I want it to be. So I warped up, I, uh, I created a second warp that's quite a bit longer so I can wrap it around my neck and still have it drape below my waist. Um, and I'm working on that and I'm being a little more mindful of um, what I'm doing. A bit more specific. And I'm using two different hand spun yarns as the weft. So, Here's the warp, and there's a little bit of the weaving there. You can see those little texture bumps popping up. That's from hand spun yarn from um, a collaboration I did with Fiber Love Diary called Mix It Up Collab Queen of Hearts, where we each had the same bat and we spun it totally different. I didn't know what she was going to do. She didn't know what I was going to do. And then we each created a video and posted it on our YouTube channels. And it was a lot of fun. And I thought, you know, this goes so well with all the browns in the warp that I want to use it. And then I have this brown hand spun with all these sparkles in it from A Star Is Shorn Fiber Club. It was um, Mystery in Japan Fiber Club several years ago, 2016, I believe. Um, maybe 2017, I'm not exactly sure, but it was a few years ago. And I've never really found that perfect project to use this. This was a blend of different fibers, some of it very luxurious, something I would never purchase for myself, but as part of a fiber club was a lot of fun to play with. And so my plan is to use up all of this and a huge amount of this. Now I only have a portion of the yarns on these, um, these bobbins here, and I will run out and have to refill. I, I'm not even a quarter of the way through. I don't think I'm going to have enough yarn, but we'll see. We'll play it by ear, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. I was um, doing about 20 picks of brown and five picks of red, and then I spent three hours on the phone with my dad, which is great. We hardly ever talk, and so it was really nice to catch up and chat about all the different things going on in his life and in my life, and... Um, we shared pictures back and forth, and it was, it was just really fun. And I was weaving away and not paying attention to what I was doing, and I completely lost the pattern. <laughs> so it's no longer a precise pattern, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. In fact, it can be less precise in the middle as long as I go back to the other end sort of matching up. It doesn't have to, but I would like for it to. So... That's what I've been doing with the loom, and I would love to get back to weaving, but my back is doing a bit better, and I'm back to spinning and planning, and so I don't know when I'll get this done, but I am practicing for a future project, which I will discuss with you shortly. Mm. All 
right, so before I get started into the new plans for the future and things like that, I wanted to share with you a little bit of what the kids got me for Christmas because I'm really excited. So my 12 year old son, I was taking him to thrift stores to get Christmas presents for his siblings. And on the way to the first one, we passed a yard sale and there's a bunch of big baskets out in the yard and I'm a sucker for a good basket. So we stopped and she makes, the lady that lives in that house, she makes these scarves. And so Matthew picked out one for his sister and then I walked away and I told him, I handed him money and I was like, okay, pick one out for your mom because your mom wants one, and, but don't let me see it. So he did and he hid it from me and I had no clue until I opened it on Christmas Eve and it's just so pretty. Doesn't match my outfit, but you guys can't see my skirt, so it doesn't matter. Oh, it's just so pretty and it's very warm. I know it's cheap acrylic yarn, um, but it is handmade locally and I'm really proud to support a local maker. So that was neat. And then I got an Instapot, a really big, really nice one. I've had one several years ago. And I used it and used it and used it and used it and it finally died on me. And I, I've been a whole year without an Instapot and I've missed it so much. All I did was pressure cook in it. That was it. Well, I went on Amazon Prime and I looked up Instapots and the sizes and the specs and the prices. And I picked one out that I thought I would really enjoy. And a daily planner that I wanted. And then I had my daughter write up a note for each of these. And then she clicked pay and I didn't see the note until I opened the gifts and I got to read the sweet little notes. So the Instapot and the planner were from my kids, but I kind of picked them out. So I'm really, really happy with my presents. And I have been, this is the daily planner. I have been working away at learning the planner and figuring out how to use it, getting to know it. I've got paper stuck in here in random places that I have written stuff down on. I'm using pencil in the pages of the book and loose paper. I'm using ink pen because I can just take that out and throw it away and put a new one in. But the book itself, I don't want to rip pages out. So it's got all sorts of really neat stuff and I have a bunch of pictures that I will I'll show you a few of them. It's just got so much stuff. So this is the Mindful Productivity Guide by Sarah Steckler. And I know this is backwards, but I don't know how to switch that. <laughs> so, oh well. So that happens when you put your camera on selfie mode and it is a cell phone. Um, so I'm, I spent a few hours today working on um, planning out stuff. So, um, and that's, that's really great. I'm, I'm loving this planner. I'm loving all the different aspects of it. I love that I have these little squares that I can just throw an idea onto. And there's like a hundred of them. So I can put a ton of ideas I think of something just throw it in there and then I don't have to worry about losing a piece of paper and I have, can make yearly goals quarterly goals monthly do a monthly review um, uh, daily check-ins uh, daily tracking weekly goals uh, weekly projects I can do um, a daily task list like it's really neat, all the different things that this planner has. So I'm hoping it can kind of consolidate my random bits of paper all over the place that have you know, this thought, and this list, and these ideas, and just keep it all in one place. And I can just flip through the different pages and see everything and go from that. So I'm really hoping it'll help me stay motivated and on track for 2021. I'm not going to start actively using this until January 4th as that is the first Monday of the year and I wanted to start on a Monday and I wanted to start at the beginning of the year so that works. 
So I'm spending the last few days of 2020 and the first couple of days of 2021 getting to know my planner and playing around with how I want to use it. Now, I do have something else to share with you um, that I kind of forgot about. It's in my show notes and I went out of order because, you know, you write show notes in a specific order so that you can, when you're filming, you can go completely off the plan, right? So that's what show notes are for. They are in my house. So right around Thanksgiving, I ordered... I wanted to order a felting kit from Jen Johnson of Soft Shetland Wool. She had put a video out where she showed how to felt needle felt to sheep. And I fell in love and I said, I want one. So I went on her website and I looked for the kits and she still had the pumpkin kits, but she didn't have the sheep kits, but she had one felted sheep in her shop ready to ship. So I purchased it and she asked me if I wanted that one or if I wanted a kit. And I said, you know what? I'll take the sheep I ordered because it's really, really cute and I don't have time for another hobby. So bless her heart. She had no idea my back was in excruciating pain. Um, she sent me an early Christmas present and it was a felting kit along with this little sheep. And I will have a video of that um, coming out soon. But this is the sheep I made from her felting kit. I had to make the ears, which was hard because I don't have a felting base. So I literally used the bottom of the sheep to felt the ears. That was not the easiest, but it worked. And I just took random colors. I made a spotted sheep. I don't think this is a Shetland sheep. It's Shetland wool, but I don't think it's a Shetland sheep. So th this one is a boy, according to Jen Johnson. Isn't he cute? But this one's a little girl. And I tried to put a tail on her, but I don't think it quite shows up as a tail. Anyway, I used some black yarn that I had in my stash for the eyes and the nose. It took me about an hour and a half to felt this, to needle felt, and I had the most fun sitting on the floor, just stabbing this thing with a felting needle over and over again, and sticking wool on there and watching the transformation from a ball of felted wool and a bunch of curly locks come together into a sheep. And I've never needle felted before. It was so much fun. I thought it would be hard. It's not. I guess if you wanted to make really complicated, very specifically shaped things, it might be a little more difficult, but I just wanted to have fun. And I did. I did. I had so much fun. Whoops. So here's my little sheep. And they're living underneath the Christmas tree for now. And I'm so incredibly happy with them. So thank you so much, Jen. It made my day. These arrived the day my back was in like the most pain. I just stopped spinning because my back was spasming. And I had sat on the um, the heating pad for a while and I took some pain medicine. And as soon as I got off the wooden chair and quit spinning, the spasms stopped, which is good. Um, and then the box was delivered to my door and I spent some time just playing with it and enjoying the felting process. Perfect timing, perfect gift, perfect pick me up. Um, so thank you so much for your generosity, Jen. And you guys, if you've never needle felted and you kind of wonder what it was like and if that's something you would enjoy doing, Go order a kit from Jen Johnson, softshetlandwool.com. Her felting kits are super easy and you can select the option to get a felting needle if you don't have one. She sent mine stuck into a piece of cardboard so it wouldn't get lost. And I think I put it right back in the cardboard when I was done with it so I wouldn't lose it. 
absolutely wonderful. Perfect little pick-me-up project to just brighten my day. And I highly recommend that you treat yourself or someone you love with a felting kit because they're super easy. <laughs> and if you think this is too much, get the pumpkin. It's really, it's smaller, it's easier, it won't take as much effort and time to create it. So there you have it. And Jen Johnson has tutorials on YouTube on how to do both the pumpkin and the sheep. So go check her out. If you aren't watching her and aren't following her, you totally should be. Okay. That's all of that. Now, plans for the future. Last month I talked about my Make 9. I've changed my Make 9. I will put a picture in here. There is one project missing. There should be nine pictures. And for some reason, a picture I downloaded didn't translate to Google Pictures, which is where I make the collage and then I email it to my phone. Life is so complicated. If I could just use the computer, it would be easy, but I can't. So I downloaded all the pictures, made the collage, emailed it, and it's missing one picture. So I put the name of that vest where that picture should go uh, in the collage, but I don't have the picture to share it with you. So if you're curious and you're on Ravelry, you can go look up my queue and you'll see all of them listed in my queue. I don't have plans to do them in any particular order, but the, the Ravelry queue is set up in order from one to nine. Um, I wanted to focus on patterns that I already own or patterns that I have really been wanting to try out for some time. So for the patterns I already own, I'm doing the and I have no idea if I'm pronouncing this correctly. It's a Norwegian word. Sedestal, Sedestal Leg Warmers by Skandir Knits. And Lillentind Hat by Arctic Yarns. Again, that is a Norwegian word. Um, Moraine Sweater by Tim Can Knits. It's part of the... Um, oh, I can't remember. I'll stick it in here because I'm drawing a blank. I, I went to write that down and it just says part of the and nothing else. So, yeah. And then the Norwegian dress, which I looked up the name and it's in the picture. Um, so those are patterns that I already own. And then the socks I'm spinning for, if I get the yarn done, I would like to knit those this coming year. And then I have... Um, I was going to do that cabled skirt that I showed you last time, and I, I took it out completely. And the tank top, the pretty little pink tank top I was going to do, was replaced with an actual fully cabled vest. I thought that would be a little less overwhelming than the fully cabled skirt. So that um, is a pattern I will have to purchase, but it'll be a less intimidating all-over cabled pattern, which is something I really wanted to do this year. I wanted to do it last year, but let me rephrase that. I wanted to do that in 2020, but I did never get to it. So I'm going to do it in 2021. When you're at the end of the year talking and you're not sure if a video is coming out today or in two or three days, is this like, which year are you talking about? Anyway, those are my Nimic 9 plans with the exception of one item that may not happen this year and it has to do with my loom and why I have suddenly become an avid weaver. I want to make a pair of hand sewn, literally hand stitched women's trousers well fitted to my body out of hand woven fabric that I make myself from hand spun yarn that I have processed from raw fleece. That's a little bit more than the dress I'm working on. I don't know yet which fiber I'm going to use. I don't know anything beyond what I just said. I don't know the colors. I don't know. I'm thinking of lace weight yarn. So I have a really fine fabric, not a thick bulky one. But I'm really liking the fingering weight fabric, fingering weight 
yarn, but I would need to weave it a little bit more dense, I think. I am probably going to line it with um, linen. So I'll flat line, I guess, I'm not sure. Linen, muslin, something like that. Um, so with that in mind, I'm practicing weaving so I can get better at weaving a consistent fabric, get better at keeping my tension really nice and consistent. And um, I will be doing a mock-up. I have never done a mock-up. My mom sewed a lot. She never did mock-ups. I didn't know about mock-ups until recently when I started watching um, YouTube channels where people were doing historical recreations of costumes. Um, and it just blew my mind. Why would you waste your time creating the item to out of one fabric to go back and create it with a different fabric? Like you're doing twice the work. But after watching like hundreds of videos, I realized the importance of doing a mock-up so you don't screw up your good expensive fabric while you're making all the changes to the pattern that you need to make to make it work for your body. So that's going to be fun. Um... And then I have some new stuff coming for the shop and the business and YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. I'm excited. I sat down with Micah um, and we talked this morning before he went to work about how I can juggle running a business and creating for the shop and doing my own personal projects, personal creating. and family life, which is the most important part in the middle of all that. So we came up with a tentative plan. It's kind of a foundational plan of how to juggle all these different aspects of life. And through that came up with some ideas that I will be sharing with you guys in a separate video because they're just too cool to put in here at the end. So I will be doing a separate video to announce all these really cool upcoming things. Um, but the main focus for 2021 is balance. I need to find balance between creating for my business and creating for me. Um, I have been kind of playing with the idea of running the business for a few years now, but I've been creating for me consistently. And now I'm having to create for the business but I also am creating for me and I've really been struggling the past month on how I can find balance there. So I finally just like, Micah, I need help. You know me better than anybody. What can we do to find balance here? And he gave me some really good ideas that I'm gonna try out. So I'm expecting the first quarter of the year to be experimental juggling and settling into a steady routine and a rhythm that works. So I'm really excited and I can't wait to share my plans with you. So uh, be in the next few days probably before I get that done, maybe a week or two. I want to kind of percolate the ideas a bit more before I make the announcement. However, I do have an announcement today and that is that Jen Johnson of Soft Shetland Wool and I are doing a, an Instagram live video sometime in the very near future on how to adjust a pattern to fit a different gauge. And we're using her uh, bushel basket liner pattern as the example. It's very, very simple. You just need some measurements, you need the gauge, and you can work out the maths. And she asked me if I would do this with her live so I could teach her and at the same time teach you guys. So. I'm really, really excited about that, and it will be announced on Instagram and Facebook um, before we go live. So I hope you guys will join us for that, and I thank you very much for the generosity of you spending your time with me today. This was not supposed to be such a long video, but it has become that again. Uh, there's just so much to talk about. So... I do appreciate you and I appreciate your comments and I appreciate your time and I'm looking forward to sharing some new exciting things with you in the near future and 
I hope you guys enjoy this. Have a great day. Enjoy everything you do today, and I will see you next time.